Hello again, this is Doug the Two Minute Gardener and today we're going to talk about concrete driveways. We're going to go through how they do the colors on these driveways. We're also going to look at how control joints, also known as expansion joints, are made for these driveways and the different kinds of ways you can uh, install these joints as far as angles and bands and diagonals and those kind of fun things. So let's get cracking. And so colored concrete is kind of nice because Davis Colors comes with a wide range of different kind of really subtle colors. Notice this one is not your standard gray. This is actually Palomino. I'm going to kind of show you how this gets created uh, and installed. Everything from the demolition to the final finishing. So let's get cracking. Here's what it looked like before. It was a beat up ugly driveway. Also notice that the driveway was only the width of the garage so it didn't allow for a whole lot of parking on either side of it. So the first step of course as always is destroy it. And so the guys bring in the jackhammers and just start having at it. Now this driveway was about 40 years old and it was 8 inches thick in some areas. It took a lot of effort and a lot of trips to the dump to get it all out. Once everything was demoed out they're going to grade it all and compact all that dirt to get it nice and hard. And then the next step after compaction and grading is the rebar. This is your number three rebar with about 24 inch spacings wired together, elevated on blocks. And that is a very important part of any concrete is to do that rebar with a nice uh, tight spacing. All right, they've done all the prep work. It's time to pour some concrete. So again, I mentioned earlier that Davis produces about 30 different colors of concrete. This one is called Palomino. Now notice the difference between the wet concrete that you see here and what the dry one looked like in the beginning of the video. And we'll see the dry one at the end of this video. But when it comes out of the truck, it really is this dark. And then it lightens up very quickly as the concrete dries. So concrete gets poured in they use these horizontal floats to float it all and get it nice and level and then they start doing the control joints now the control joints are very important in concrete because basically you're just trying to control where concrete is going to crack all concrete is going to crack it ten generally cracks about every six to eight feet so that's your minimum for control joints six to eight feet but if you're going to do them, you can actually do them with some artistic flair. And that's what we did with this driveway. We did four foot control joints and we did them on a 45 angle from the house. So it gives a nice diamond pattern as you're standing in front of the house. So again, control joints are formed in the concrete to, to help control where the concrete is going to crack. The idea is that the crack will develop in the joints and not in this parts of the concrete that are really visible. Anyway, they lay these out, they measure them very carefully, and then they use string line uh, that are staked to the sides of the driveway, and then they use these grooving tools, that's groovy man, to very carefully lay these very long control joints in a perfect line, following the string lines like you see here. Now in the main part of the driveway, again we did diagonal uh, control joints on the edges we did a nice 16 inch border and you'll see that in just a second but here's a great example of how they do uh, a control joint across a long driveway and again there's the groover in action uh, if you ever wondered how these guys laid in they have to do it when the concrete's wet now this particular day that the concrete was done it was a perfect 72 degrees and sunny it wasn't too hot it wasn't too cold it was nice and dry the concrete formed at a perfect rate so it was very easy to do all this grooving and it's a kind of an interesting technique watching these guys groove the concrete and then smooth it and then groove it and then smooth it and it goes back and forth for a couple hours as the concrete is drying now again here's the other kind of groover the one they use for making the bands and then that again smooths the side and then they have to go back and groove it and so it's a back and forth process it takes a couple of hours to do this control joint process 
on a driveway and sidewalkways as large of the as what you see here. This was about a 900 square foot driveway and, and with the two little walkways that wrap around the side. All right, the control joints are all done. Now it's time to do a top cast finish. So a top cast is a surface retardant and basically it burns off the top 16th inch layer of the concrete. It's sprayed on while the concrete is still wet and then it sits on it overnight um, to kind of eat away and etch into that concrete. And then the next day they come back and they use a power washer to blast that surface uh, retardant off and you're removing the top cast concrete. Now it's important with driveways like this that you don't let all that concrete um, material and the surface retardant top cast material go into the street then into the storm drain. So these guys have to set up these little barriers and they use these little pumps as you see here. Uh, all this stuff is flowing down into this area where their pump is and this pump is pumping it into the hose and into the waste drums that are set up on their pickup trucks um, to pr get processed with the rest of the concrete residue. So it's important that you have a good concrete company that knows how to do this. They're not just dumping all this material into the storm drain because that can pollute the environment. So make sure you use a good concrete company. Um, and the guys in this video is Cabrera Concrete, and they did a great job. Anyway, again, they use the power washer, blast away the surface, retarding the top cast, and it leaves this kind of really cool speckled thing. So let's look at it again. So before, it was only the width of the driveway and it was kind of all busted up and gray and cracked and really just a disastrous mess. And here's the after. Got a nice beige tint. We added three feet to either side of the driveway so that when they park their cars in the driveway, they have plenty of room to get out of the driveway. People can actually walk past the cars. Here's those diamond control joints. Um, that you saw them using with the grooving tool. Now we also kind of uh, did a nice succulent garden and dry stream bed on the side of the driveway and then we flanked the driveway with these really beautiful LED low voltage lights from FXL and uh, check out the lighting videos I've done to see more about those lights. So again I love these diamond expansion joints. The guys did a really great job with that. Alright now here's a close-up of that top cast number three finish and again why well, I, I this is my favorite finish because it produces this cool speckled pattern that really shines brightly when you get that hot direct sunlight but it's also grippy so top cast finish is really great for driveways walkways where you have a little bit of an incline swimming pools i love using top cast around swimming pools because it's not slippery so if you're going to do swimming pools driveways walkways where there's a little incline and you want a little grip to it use that top cast finish well that's all the time we have for today thank you so much to unique landscaping and cabrera concrete for all their help in this video make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to get to uh, get more of my videos. Again, this is Doug the Two Minute Gardener saying thank you so much for watching.